veterinarian and I have realized in my 10 years of practicing veterinary medicine that our dogs and cats suffer from a lot of chronic diseases that are just things that are just way too common in my opinion like allergies, arthritis, ear infections, skin infections, even dental disease. I think that there's way too much of this going on and it's and cancer. One in three dogs will die from cancer. One in three cats, um, especially over the age of, I think it was like three or four statistics show. And it's just really sad, right? I just see it way too often. I think that it's unnecessary. I don't think that it should be that way. I think that, that we could do better as veterinarians, as pet owners, as pet loving society, you know, America, almost everyone has a pet, you know, at least 50% of the households have pets. And they really provide us so much love and companionship. And they really, they lower your blood pressure. They lower anxiety. So many studies have shown how good it is to own a pet dog or cat. So we owe it to them to do our best to keep them healthy. So my YouTube channel is about how to cook for your dog. Cats are a little bit trickier. They are actually obligate carnivores. They should not be eating any carbohydrate at all. Um, so I, and they're just picky eaters in general. So I will get to that, but first my mission is to help more dogs get whole fresh food. So I teach people how to cook for their dog on my channel, Farmer's Market Fido, which is a fairly new channel. And obviously I'm very busy working as a veterinarian. I have three children and I have a podcast also called the Biohack Your Pets podcast. But the YouTube channel is really, really great because people can actually see me doing it. You know, they see me making the food and then I'll often link like a recipe that they can download later. So the question that you asked was how do new YouTubers, you know, become successful on YouTube? And I think that one of the biggest things is to make a channel that is actually serving a need, right? So of course, entertainment channels are serving a need. We all need entertainment. It's a little bit trickier. I'm, that's not my area of expertise, right? How to make a, a channel that's entertaining. That's one way to do it. But the other way to do it is to make a channel that's educational, right? And to make sure that you are actually giving kind of tutorial-like videos and you tell the people up front what they're going to learn there and then you teach them something. Most people who go to YouTube are looking up, you know, how to fix my kitchen sink, how to change the oil in my car, you know, whatever kind of car, um, how to cook for your dog, how to make home cooked dog food. This is something that people are looking up and they need information and they need it from a veterinarian. So I'm an expert on that subject, dog nutrition. And I, there's a few other people who have videos out. Mo none of them really, uh, most of them are not veterinarians at all. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I think the more, the better, you know, I'm more about collaboration than competition and I'd rather dogs be eating whole fresh food. So whoever they get the information from, hallelujah. But I want people who really want to hear it from a vet to hear it from a vet, right? Because a lot of people are going to be more comfortable with that. have actually grown the channel almost double in the last couple of months, which I think is very uh, important to share in this interview because once I realized really what my audience wants from me and I was able to then really um, interact with the audience by answering questions based on the things that they're really searching for to find me and then to be um, put into suggested videos because I am utilizing keywords, of course. I'm tagging those videos and the things that people are gonna be searching for. And there's a lot of different tools that people can use to figure out which things people are searching for, um, like keywords everywhere. And what's the other one I use? Oh, TubeBuddy. But there's a lot you can go to 
Google and you can figure out, you can just search in Google, right? You don't have to pay for anything. You can just search. And once you start to say like how to cook for my dog or dog food, and then, you know, you can see what it comes up with. They'll give you a list of about 10 things. And when you really pay attention to that, you'll realize what it is that people are looking for, what they really want help with. And then if that's your area of expertise or your passion, then you can share information on that. And if you are finding that one video does a lot better than another video, obviously that's the type of video that your viewers want to see from you, right? That's what YouTube sees that you're an expert in, that the viewers that are on YouTube want to continue to see over and over again. And so I have a couple of videos that are what they kind of call breakout videos, right? Where I've done dog treats, but I think that's been done a lot, right? That's been done a lot and everybody feels pretty comfortable making a dog treat no matter who makes the recipe because they know it's just something that they're gonna get on the side. But when it comes to the actual meal, the whole food diet, they wanna hear that from a vet. So those videos have done better for me, which I mean, it's, it seems like duh, right? I mean, I knew that that would be the case, but it's fun for me to cook for my dogs, including treats and other things. And so I just did all of it. And I've done a few review videos, which one of them has done pretty well, actually. So obviously people are going in there to see what does she think about this particular box? You know, there's a bunch of different boxes that you can get on subscription for your dog. And, and that one's done pretty well other ones haven't done as well. So it just is interesting. You have to kind of pay attention. You have to see what people are really valuing your opinion on and then continue to do more of that, but just in different ways, right? I have dog food based out of, off of turkey and dog food based off of fish. And it just depends because not every dog can eat turkey or fish or chicken or beef, but whatever niche that you're in, whatever it is that you're talking about, there's always, you know, multiple ways to tell the story, multiple ways to give the instruction because it takes a few times for us to learn something and it takes hearing it different ways, right? So if I love watching somebody teach me how to do YouTube, for example, I'm gonna keep going back until I kind of get it. <laughs> like it's gonna take several videos before I'm like, oh, okay, keywords. You gotta pay attention to that, keywords. You gotta put those in. So, you know, that's important and, it, and it's the same for everybody. So that's what I've done. That's what I've done to go and, and also being consistent, right? I mean, everybody says this and it sounds so cliche and I'm really busy. So what started, I think about a year ago was the first video and then it was like another one a week later and another one a month later and then a couple months and then they back to back and then it was very inconsistent. And so right now, honestly, I can make a video about once a month and then there might be like a little fun video in between. Like I just did a quick video on how to use an Instapot to make ha uh, hard boiled eggs, which is very quick, but so freaking helpful. <laughs> like to me, I think it's helpful. I just like changed my life. It's so much easier than having them on the stove. So I just wanted to share that. And then I can share that in Instant Pot Facebook groups. And it's another way to connect with people in a different from a different audience potentially. But that video is not getting as many views, of course, as the full recipes where they can actually get the recipe. But that's okay. And I knew that that would be the case, but it's still, it wasn't very difficult for me to make that video. The other ones take a lot more time and effort. So about once a month is what I'm able to do. And I think my audience is fine with that. And when I have help, I'll do more. <laughs> There's so many things, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. How do you actually do any kind of promotional marketing for your business? I mean, all of that stuff, which of course YouTube works in that way to help me um, gain some awareness around my practice and the things that I'm passionate about in my practice. And it's a way for me to help my clients that I see in person too. So I don't have to go through every single detail with them. I can say, I made a video. Here you go. <laughs> like, I don't have time to talk about it right now in this exam, right? Necessarily, like, how do you make the recipe? But I can send it to you or you can go to my channel and you can see how to do it exactly. And, and that's another reason that I've started this channel too. Hey, 
I, I learned from watching other successful YouTubers that for one thing, it helps to have somewhat of a similar aesthetic so that people start to recognize your thumbnails. And I don't know that I have enough videos for people to get to that yet, but I do try to follow some sort of a guide. Although I'm, I'm kind of ADD, I love variety. I like to mix it up. So they're not all exactly the same. That would just, to me, that would be boring, but I do try to follow some similar pattern so that people could start to learn my thumbnails in a list of videos suggested and then come back to me. The other thing is big, bold font, right? It's really important to be able to read the title of the video when it's really small in suggested videos on YouTube. You may have a smaller print in like the second part of the title, but the title itself, like the main portion of it, home cooked dog food or whatever it is that you're talking about really needs to be big and bold and easy to read, not like fancy scripts that you really can't make out when they're small. And then of course, bright colors and cute puppies always help too. <laughs>really good question for the answer the honest answer for me right now is I'm experimenting a little bit with that obviously one of the things that YouTube looks at when you're growing your YouTube channel is watch time and so to increase watch time it makes sense to have longer videos if you're especially if you're going to have less videos now if you're able to make a couple videos every week it actually is nicer for the viewer probably to have a shorter video but the most important thing is to say what you need to say in the shortest time possible. I also really want my videos to be like a cooking show that you might see on TV. And so it's a little bit longer in those videos because it's me talking about why I'm using the ingredients that I'm using. And it does take a little bit more time to go through all of that. And I am showing little bits and pieces of each part of putting the recipe together. And so those take longer. Obviously, the video about putting the hard, making hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot is very quick. I mean, it only takes four minutes to make the eggs, and I'm certainly not going to video the Instant Pot the whole time. You know what I mean? It's like, put them in, and I come back when it's done. So that's really quick. But the cook, when I'm actually preparing and adding in supplements and putting it all together like that, it, it is going to be a bit longer. And I've also started to try and see if it works to repurpose some of the content from my podcast. And those are going to be a lot longer. The podcast conversations are about an hour long. And I do want to include all of the ones that involve nutrition discussion. And I just haven't had a chance to go through and put them all up there yet. But I want to make a slideshow, you know, and then you have to make like the thumbnails, the graphics that go with it. And it, it does take time to make a slideshow that's an hour long <laughs> and make it somewhat interesting. Certainly not my area of expertise, but it's fun and I think getting that information out there in every way that I can is really important. And so I just don't wanna limit those interviews that I've done with amazing guests to just my podcast. I wanna be able to put them on YouTube too. And so those are gonna be really long. Yeah, and people yeah. are probably just gonna listen to them. Some people do just listen to YouTube videos. They don't even watch the whole thing, right? They kind of do it like a podcast, right? So that can work too, we'll see. My ultimate vision for this really is to actually have a Food Network show or a cooking channel like on TV where I'm cooking for dogs. I really see that our pets are more and more valuable to us. They are a member of our family. A lot of people are interested in cooking for them, even if it's not all the time. You know, like I get it. I give my kids McDonald's sometimes, <laughs> maybe not McDonald's. I give my kids fast food sometimes. I give my kids box cereal sometimes. I give my animals some of the pre-made dog food sometimes, but I also cook for them. And I want everybody to know that they can do that too, that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And so I see that as being a really fun and interactive way. And, and sometimes you can even make it where you start to prepare a meal and then you make it for both, right? And you, there's just subtle differences in what you can do for your dog versus what you can do for yourself. And so I'm actually putting together a course as well right now to teach people about dog nutrition and how to cook for your dog and what are those subtle differences between what you would cook for yourself and what you would cook for your dog. And so that way 
you can really cut down on prep time if you're prepping both meals all at the same time. You're basically feeding almost the same thing with just a few little changes. So, yeah. so yeah, hopefully you see me on TV. <laughs>